took off their chariot wheels that they drove, drove them heavily so that the Egyptians, notice how determined the devil's crowd is. Devil's crowd's bullies also. We see it all over the land. So the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. They don't went too far. They haven't got too far in the wrong way. God's in the spirit is not always going to strive with man. It's going to be too late. There is a day of salvation. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. Right there. Lord have mercy. These men probably died and went to hell. I hope some of them called on the Lord right there at the last minute. And Moses stretched forth this, his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength. When the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Wow. Just think this was Israel's greatest enemy. And Moses stood up by faith. And some of the children of Israel did. And God worked through that. And he destroyed their enemy right there. The Bible says the last enemy shall be destroyed is death. You know he destroyed the works of the devil in my heart. The devil can't get on the inside of my heart anymore. I can't get unsaved. I can't sin on the inside anymore. Because Jesus lives there and I'm kept by the power of God, sealed with that Holy Spirit of God unto the day of redemption. I have a clean conscience on the inside because Jesus lives there. It's plain and simple. When you put your faith in Jesus, He'll save you eternally. He'll destroy death on the inside of your soul. Yes, I sin on the outside. Yes, I'm dying daily. But on the inside, I'm alive. The Bible says there's a well springing up, well of water springing up to everlasting life right there on the inside of those that are saved. Bless the Lord. Thank God for that. <clears throat> Amen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to her strength. When the morning appeared, the Egyptians fled against it, and, over, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. God's going to take care of it. He's going to take care of his people also. And if we have problems, we can go to him for comfort and help through trials and tribulations of life because we are going to have them. I remember being sick the other day. Man, sometimes I get sick and it seems like I'm going to die, like I'm going to have a stroke or something, you know? And I just looked over and said, Lord, help me. Man, I come up. I was like, thank you, Lord. You know what I mean? He's protecting me. But the devil, he'll say, you could have a stroke. You're going to die. Tell your wife to call 911. You know what I mean? <laughs> It'll scare you to death sometimes. You have gas on your heart area. You think, I'm fixing to have a heart attack right here. You know? <laughs> Lord protects us. We're not dying until he gets ready. And when he's ready, it'll be okay. I can't stop it. I just hope it's really quick, you know. I don't even know what hit me. Bam, I don't even turn to All of a sudden, I look around, there's the angels taking me to heaven. You know what I mean? Amen. Hey, I knew y'all was there. Amen. Just take me on to heaven. <laughs> He's been walking with me, talking with me for how many years now? 30 something years. <laughs> I saved when I was 20 years old. I'm 48 now. <laughs> Fixing to be 49. <clears throat> I'm starting at the beginning of my old age. <laughs> the beginning of my old age. It takes about, what, 30 years to really get old? I'm beginning my old age. <laughs> he takes me today, that would be all right. You know what I mean? I think my wife trying to set me up. <laughs> you take out insurance. I'm taking out insurance. She's all for it, boy. <laughs> House getting in her name, everything. I'm like, you set me up. <laughs> you don't expect me to live much longer, do you? She gets on to me about my eating all the time, my sugar and stuff. Amen. I got sugar problems. <coughs> and I should be better. You know what I mean? We yeah, should please. be better. Like that, but I've always ate sugar all my life. <coughs> it's hard to get that stuff up. You know what I mean? 
But it can be done. But the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened in me. Amen. Right? Amen. You just got to be determined enough. Once you put out effort, God will give you the increase. He'll give you more strength. Amen. And any bad habit in your life. Almost every bad habit I ever had, I quit it cold turkey. That's about the only way to do it. Right there. Amen. Quit cold turkey and start crying out to God. He'll give you strength. You wouldn't believe. So he says in verse 29, but the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea. That means the whole sea had a little circle in it. And at that point, there was water all the way around that thing. God protected them right there. Their enemy was gone, thank God. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. God did that for his people also. He does miracles for us to build our faith up. You know, God puts up with our ill manners. You know, he put up with ill manners. These uh, Israelites begin to complain. Matter of fact, after all the, I think the 10 miracles, it was the 10 miracles. I'm not sure. 10 or 11 miracles that he did in Egypt. 10 that he did in Egypt. And then, deliver them in the midst of the sea. Right after this, they begin in verse 24 of 15. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? A little old thing like that. God couldn't provide something to drink. Guess what God did? He provided something for them to drink. Israel was young at this time. They complained a lot. You know what I mean? But after a while, they kept complaining. God dealt with them. And sometimes when we're young Christians, we do stupid stuff. I remember so many stupid things I did when I was a young Christian. You know, said things. God just kept putting up with me. Trying to, to fertilize that tree, you know, where it talks about in the Bible for a year. Fertilize that tree. Put up with my ill manners. Overlooked a few things. But after a while, you're supposed to grow up in Christ. You're supposed to be a little more mature about stuff. And when we reach that maturity level, we're still doing that. They say, you know, God's going to have to chastise his people. He don't want to, but he has to. He's waited long enough. It's like he put up with Saul. He kept putting up with Saul's ill manner. Finally, he said, that's it, Saul. I'm rejecting you from being king. <clears throat> we can lose our positions that the Lord wants us to have in life. Uh, you need to find the will, the will of the Lord for your life. You're not in this Bible. And you're not praying. You're not trying to live the Christian life that you're commanded to do. You made a vow to God when you got saved. You didn't even know it, but you made a vow to God. You said, Lord, if you save me, I'll live for you. I'll do anything you want me to do. Somebody made a deal with the Lord. I don't say make a deal with God. Somebody did that I know. So far, they ain't held their end of the party yet. They told the Lord, Lord, if you make me, help me through this, I'll read your Bible. <coughs> Guarantee they never start reading their Bible. If you make a vow to God, you better keep it. Plain and simple as that. When we got saved, we made a vow to God that we were living. <coughs> he wants to use us right there. He wants to bless our life. We're preventing the blessings of the Lord in our lives. You think about it. Well, we appreciate what God gave us today. Let's go home and really think about what I said. We'll have an altar call. If Geraldine wants to come up here and sing a song, Amazing Grace, or whatever one, you want to come down and pray? <coughs>
Grace, Heavenly Father, we come to you today to give thanks, honor, and glory. We thank you for everything you do for us. We ask that you forgive us for the sins that we committed and the sins that we hadn't even committed yet. Dear God, we thank you for the life of Jeanette. We ask that you let her enter into the kingdom of heaven. We ask that you touch Shell and our family. We ask that you give us strength encourage this week. Protect everybody at work. Protect them all the way home. Yes, we ask all this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.